the central problem in information theory is efficient and reliable transmission of data from a source to a destination. And just to give you a, a quick sense of the scope of problems which information theory can be applied to, I have a bunch of images here and um, later I'm going to go through in a little more detail how information theory is applied in all these situations. But just really briefly, so whenever you store images on your computer, compression of images, when you watch movies on your computer, when you compress text files or any audio files that you listen to on your computer, when you use Skype or other video teleconferencing applications, uh, whenever you're using a computer in general, you're, you're using RAM and, and, uh, and coding methods are essential for the correct operation of your computer's memory in space a huge number of, of space exploration missions make essential use of information theory and, and in all these things I just want to make clear in the the application of these coding methods and information theory methods are an essential in many cases an essential component to making all these things work barcodes CDs DVDs blu-rays DSL uh, when you watch digital TV uh, Many devices, 3G, 4G, mobile devices that use the internet are using coding, you know, advanced coding methods and information theory. Some more space applications and just a, a huge number of things. So, uh, so there's just really a, a vast array of applications to in our sort of modern technologically technosphere that, that make essential use of information theory and coding methods. So what is information theory? In this video, we're going to look at just a, a sort of a, a big picture outline. Voila, I have my grid here prepared. A big picture outline of the different aspects of information theory. So I said at the beginning that it, it involves efficient and reliable transmission or communication. So in these two columns, we're going to break information theory up in this way efficiency and reliability there's a nice decomposition in this way and another way uh, when we when we are trying to make our communications efficient we are doing compression compression and over here reliability involves well there's more than you know one way to achieve reliability would be like through hardware improving the quality of your hardware but the information theoretic approach is error correction error correction so compression and error correction and on this side the compression side sometimes this is also referred to as source coding not in the sense of writing source code or computer code a different sense of source coding and over here this is sometimes referred to as channel coding channel coding so information theory can roughly be decomposed into these two main problems compression and error correction and so, for example, compression, I think you, you sort of know what I mean, but maybe to make it a little more concrete, whenever you use WinZip or GZip, uh, you're, you're, you're using compression technologies. And whenever you're using even just a JPEG or an MPEG image or movie, you're, you're making use of compression techniques. And error correction would be things like, well, whenever you listen to a CD or you watch a DVD, you're making essential use of error correction technologies because any CD or DVD or Blu-ray is going to have little scratches on it. And those scratches introduce errors in the reading of the CD and they need to be corrected for. So most of the time you don't even notice those errors because they are already be, have, they have already been corrected. Or another example would be like when you watch, if you've ever watched live streaming video on the internet, on your computer, every once in a while you'll notice that you'll get a little blip, you know, that sometimes there will be like the things will go crazy for a little bit. And, but the vast majority of time, those errors have been corrected for and you, you don't even notice them. But every once in a while, some of them get through. So now, as you can probably tell from my grid here, we're also going to break 
break things up in this horizontal direction, translaterally. Is that a word? So in this direction, our first part is going to be the mathy part, will be this first row, the sort of more theoretical part. And then down here, we're going to have algorithms. Algorithms. If I can spell that. Algorithms. And the mathy part, usually people refer to this as information theory. Info theory. So this is sort of information theory proper. And down here we have coding theory or coding methods. Maybe I'll call it coding methods to distinguish from the, this is more the theory and this is more the, the applications or the, the methods. And, you know, just to be clear, there, there's a lot of math that goes into understanding and proving things about these coding methods. So it's not like this is just the only math is going on up here. So now that we have our nice matrix, we need to fill it in. So what are we going to put here? Well, I'm going to give you just the broad outline of, of the main sort of core topics in information theory. So compression can be broken up into lossless compression and lossy compression. And for the lossless part, we have the main result is the source coding source coding theorem due to Shannon the source coding theorem is the, the essential theorem here and then along the way we're going to see the Kraft Macmillan inequality Kraft Macmillan inequality and then, actually, let me come back to the lossy part because the natural flow of ideas from here goes to the theory of error correction codes. And here, the main theorem, so over here we had this, this source code coding theorem. And over here, our main theorem is going to be the channel coding theorem, naturally enough. This was source coding and this is channel coding. So over here we have the channel coding theorem. Sometimes people also call this the noisy channel coding theorem. Channel coding theorem. So the source coding theorem tells you, roughly speaking, the best possible compression that you can achieve. Whereas the channel coding theorem tells you for a given noisy channel, the best possible error correction that you can achieve. And Part of part of that involves understanding, defining and understanding the channel capacity. That's a central concept. Channel capacity quantifies this, how good you can do. And a key concept in proving this and understanding it is what's called typicality and the asymptotic equipartition property, very fancy term borrowed from physicists. This is all. This also comes into play over here, but it's most essential uh, in in this aspect of the theory. So having having done that, and then then the next natural thing to talk about is for lossy compression. You can quantify the best you can do under you know certain circumstances, and that is characterized by the rate distortion theorem rate distortion theorem so these are the three central theoretical results the source coding theorem the channel coding theorem and the rate distortion theorem these are the three central theoretical results in the core of information theory so what about down here what are we going to what are the corresponding coding methods so let's let's talk about that now, maybe just before we jump into that, I, the reason why I wanted to go through and give you this, even though it's just a very high level summary or sort of outline, is that for me, when I was learning all this stuff, it was difficult to sort of keep track of where all these things belonged and how they all sort of fit together. 
So hopefully this will be useful to you for that and you might want to refer back to it later. So under compression, for coding methods, we have symbol codes, symbol codes. And the most important one is the Huffman code or Huffman codes. And then we also have stream codes. And the two, perhaps the two most important stream coding methods to date are arithmetic coding, arithmetic coding, and the lempel ziv method. It's a very fun one to say, lempel ziv. So these are coding methods. These are algorithms for compression. And they have many, many applications, as you can imagine. And then over here under error correction, we have also some, some coding methods for achieving error correction. And the, the simplest one would just be re repetition codes, but maybe we'll jump to sort of some of the more interesting ones. Error correction coding really began with Hamming codes developed by Richard Hamming in the, the, the I guess it was around 1950. And then maybe the next major class was, this is sort of in in chronological order, so-called BCH codes. And an important example of this was the read is, the read Solomon codes. And usually that's coupled with a convolutional coding method. And then, so more modern, we have turbo codes. Turbo codes were a major revolution when they came about in the early 1990s. And, uh, and following closely on the heels of the development of turbo codes were Gallagher codes or low density parity check codes, LDPC. And those had actually been discovered even at, in like 1960, but they, it, nobody really realized how good they were until the mid 1990s. Okay, so this is our outline of, of sort of the, the key, the core topics in information theory and coding methods. And hopefully this will be useful for you to sort of keep track of all the different topics that, that I'm going to talk about in this series of videos and see how they all sort of fit together. Now, I should mention that this is certainly not all there is to information theory and coding methods. There are a number of sort of very closely related fields, and I maybe should, I, I won't write them down, but just to, to mention them, cryptography and cryptanalysis is very closely related to, to, these, to, this, to these information theory methods. And uh, also algorithmic information theory, a Kolmogorov complexity and minimum description length. These are also, there, th th there are some very close connections with information theory. Also, network information theory is another closely related area. Actually, maybe in some sense, a, another you could have another column over here maybe for network information theory. And same thing for encryption or cryptography and cryptanalysis. So those are very closely related. And then a little bit less closely related, but still, still uh, uh, related fields would be statistics and machine learning. Many of the theory, uh, many of the theoretical ideas of of information theory have applications in statistics and machine learning. And on and conversely, some uh, you know, statistics and machine learning can be used particularly in, in um, like arithmetic coding, for example. And also in economics, like portfolio theory, uh, information theory plays, plays a big role. And gambling, gambling as well. There's some interesting kind of fun, fun applications to gambling. So, okay, so that's the, the big outline of information theory and coding methods. And next, we're going to start taking a look at some examples of applications of these different coding methods to a vast array of things. And so that's going to be, that's going to be cool. Okay, see ya.